All right, section 1.1, it's called a preview of calculus. We're going to talk sort of in generalities um, and give a couple of examples of some calculus-related ideas that we're going to be addressing this semester. So to start with, just a basic overall description of what is calculus. Calculus is the mathematics of change. Okay, so write yourself down a note that says that's what calculus is. It really is the study or the mathematics of change. All right, so what we're going to do on these couple of slides that I have here is to kind of take a look at the difference between pre-calculus ideas and calculus ideas. These are not specifics on exactly how we're going to go about solving anything. That If we could do that today, we wouldn't need a whole course in it, right? Or four courses, actually. But we're going to take a look at some of the different ideas and how they're related to pre-calculus versus calculus. These are on pages 43 and 44 of your book, so I don't need you to draw any of this out. That's just not practical. But if you want to jot down, um, I think it's on your notes, actually, the 43 and 44. You can take a look at it later if you'd like. So some ideas without calculus. So if you do not have calculus, you can find the value of y when you're given the value of x. That's what that first little block says. You can find f of x when you're given x equals c. If you have calculus, you can actually find what's called a limit. That is the value you're approaching. So do you see how that second graph has a hole in it? It didn't actually have a y value there, right? But it has a value we're getting awfully close to. So that limiting process, that idea of getting close to that value and figuring out what that value is, that's a calculus concept. And it's the first calculus concept we'll encounter. Um, we can find the slope of a line in pre-calculus, and you probably spent like years doing that, right? Mm -hmm. And you did it again and again and again. It showed up in Algebra 1 and then again in Algebra 2 and then in pre-calculus. Well, it's going to show up again here, except that we're not going to find the slope of a line. We're going to find the slope of a curve. Obviously, that's different, right? You can't just take two points and calculate them because the two points don't make a line. So we're going to do that. That's our second topic that we'll be encountering in Calc 1. Um, we can find a secant line to a curve. So if you'll remember from geometry, secant means it's a line that cuts through a graph. In geometry, you probably had it cutting through a circle. Well, we're going to have it cutting through a curve when we're talking about it more generally. Um, and you can find that in pre-calculus. You just take two points and you just find their line between them, the slope of the line between them. Well, in calculus, we don't need two points. We just need one. We're going to find tangent lines. And so if you'll remember, tangent lines are places where you just touch something and kind of bounce right off of it. Okay. So that's calculus. And that's related to the slope of a curve part and the one above. Some others. Average rate of change. You can find the average rate of change without calculus. Average rate of change would be like taking the distance you traveled and dividing it by how much time it took. It's what your watch does when you do a running. It's what you can do if you're talking about the distance traveled for a trip that you went on, okay? Instantaneous change is found with calculus. That's how fast you're going right now. And that's what the watch tells me if I look down when I'm running and it says you're, you're, you're running at this speed right now. Okay, it's not an average, it's the right now speed. So we can find that, the instantaneous rate of change at a particular point in time with calculus. In pre-calculus, we can find the curvature of a circle. And with calculus, we can do it for any curve in general. Some of these topics are not things that we'll do this semester. They're further along in your calculus career. With calculus, you can find the height of a curve at a specific point. Obviously, that's related to the first thing we said. You know, it's the actual y value when you have an x value given. With calculus, you can find the maximum height on the curve or the minimum. With pre-calculus, you can find the tangent plane to a sphere. Okay, it's tangent just touching the sphere. But in calculus, you can find the tangent plane to any surface. It doesn't have to be a sphere. With pre-calculus, you can find the direction of motion along a line. And in calculus, you can do it along any curve. So hopefully what you're seeing in the calculus kind of column is that there's greater freedom in what we can do. Everything in pre-calculus was related to very simple surfaces, lines, circles, spheres, and everything in calculus is related to these sort of general ideas of curves instead. OK. 
Okay, a few more. Without calculus, you can find the area of a rectangle. I know you remember how to find that, right? Length times width. You can find the area of some other shapes as well, but not just any shape in general, right? Well, in calculus, we're going to be able to find the area under a curve. That is, we can find much more generalized areas. In pre-calculus, you can find the work done by a constant force. And in calculus, you can do it with a variable force. So some of you in physics or physics-minded know what's that's going on with that. That's something we deal with in Calc 2, okay? Calc 2 and 3 or 4, I can't remember. Uh, you can find the center of a rectangle. You can do that in, in pre-calculus. You may not remember right now, but you could, okay? Uh, with calculus, we can actually find the centroid, that is the center of any region. That is a Calc 2 concept right there. In pre-calculus, we can find the length of a line segment, right? You have something called the Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula or something like that, whichever way you're looking at that. We can do it for an arc, a curve. We can do it for any sort of shape that we would like, as long as we have an equation for it in calculus. Um, that's also a Calc 2 concept. All right, once we start talking about surfaces, we're looking at Calc 2 slash Calc 3 concepts. You can find the surface area of a cylinder. That's a geometry concept from high school, okay? Well, we can do that for a solid of revolution. So think about something spinning around, that's revolution, all right? We can do that uh, with calculus, that's Calc 2. You can find the mass of a solid object, I'm sorry, of a solid of constant density, like it's constantly distributed throughout. But we can do it with variable density, that is, in parts of it it's heavier density than in other parts of it, right? You've picked up the whatever box where it's lopsided before, right? That's the idea. Um, with pre-calculus, you can find the volume of a rectangular solid. And with calculus, you can do it for any sort of a region under a curve, much more um, flexibility. And then the last concept is definitely Calc 3, sum of a finite number of terms. You can do that with pre-calculus. You just add them all right up, right? Even if there's a lot of them, you could do it. But you can do it for an infinite number of terms with calculus. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to stop because we're out of time. We're going to pick up with two specific examples of pre-calc versus calc when we come back next time, and that's where we will continue.